What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guy, Cody, here. Joining me, Mr. Colts Law himself, Lawrence Owen. Lawrence, it has been a while since we've recorded a podcast together. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, no matter what happens, I'm going to tell you I'm doing well. So uh, <laughs> it's Colts Nation. We all need to have positivity in our lives at this point because, you know, the last few years during this the, this time frame you know there hasn't been a lot of positivity we need to have that as much as we can so i just recorded i think what a week or two ago i I recorded with Derek. so uh this is the first time between you and i i'm very glad that you reached out to me and uh i had the time to come on yeah absolutely and guys lawrence is awesome be sure to go check out his channel subscribe like all that stuff over there because he i know the work that lawrence puts in it's quality work be sure to check that out for sure but lawrence i did a video a couple days ago kind of talking about some of the strengths of this 2022 indianapolis team Um, but with that there's also some weaknesses as there is with every nfl team and i thought we could talk about them i have we have five weaknesses we're going to talk about with this team. Some of them could potentially kind of flow into each other a little bit, but I think I'll notice kind of a common trend here amongst a lot of these. Uh, so we can start here with the first point that I have, and it's just a lack of experience at wide receiver. I mean, right now the Colts have Michael Pittman Jr., who's entering year three. He's their number one wide receiver. They just drafted Alec Pierce you know, as a rookie You know, coming in. What kind of impact is he going to have? We all know Chris Ballard's even said, you know, it takes some time some, for some of these w- rookie wide receivers to get acclimated to the NFL level. I mean, we even saw that Lawrence with Michael Pittman, mm-hmm. his rookie season. It took him a little bit of time. He started to really come on at the end of the year for the first couple. And I know he had that injury and all those things, but it took him a little bit of time, right? It takes a, a lot of these receivers a lot of time, especially where he was picked, you know, in the mid to late second round there. Uh, it, it maybe take him a little bit more time to get acclimated to that NFL level. And then you got guys like Paris Campbell, who's played in 15 games in three years. And then beyond that, I mean, I think right now your vet vet guy is Kiki Kuti, who may not even make your final 53-man roster. So all this to say, the Colts don't have a veteran wide receiver right now. They have a lot of inexperience. Michael Pittman, the most accomplished guy, but he just had his first breakout season over 1,000 yards. But beyond that, Lawrence, there's really not a lot in terms of wide receiver right now in terms of experience and guys that have been there, done that. You're right, and they're going to be leaning heavily, heavily on new wide receivers coach Reggie Wayne for that experience and that veteran leadership. And he's not going to be on the field to, you know, during the games to actually, you know, lead by example. He's just going to have to be in their ear. And that's that's a situation that's that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. It's going to take a lot – From all these guys, you know, you touched on Paris Campbell. He's legitimately the Colts veteran on this team because, you know, he's been here the longest, uh, like you said, three years, but he's only played 15 games. Uh, My goodness, you know, and that's it's it's worrisome to say the least. And is there is there talent, I think, at the wide receiver group? Absolutely. Uh, But the inexperience is is. We're hoping it don't show its face too early, too often uh, this season. Yeah, we're hoping a guy like Matt Ryan could kind of make up maybe for some of those early season struggles a little bit with, you know, all the guys that he's had to work with over the course of the years. I think we can say, though, that compared to last year, the Colts have an upgraded wide receiver room from what Atlanta had. I mean, at least we can say that. That's not saying much because Atlanta kind of really struggled last year. and They really had Kyle Pitts, and that was about it <laughs> in terms of anybody who could catch the football well. So, but yeah, I think just a lack of experience. Certainly talent is there, right? I mean, talent is there. The Colts have talked about all off season about how they love these young wide receivers they drafted, but Lawrence, these guys are sixth and seventh round picks. So like how much can you really expect them to just come out and jump off the page here, you know, in their second and third seasons and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's certainly something that's going to be merit watching. And uh, that's why I've always been on the team sign a veteran. Now I know you made a video about how, how they're not going to sign a veteran, which I'm a little bit bummed because I would love for them to, I think they still need to, Um, I think obviously Reggie Wayne provides great leadership there, but there's just nothing. I I can't think you can't beat just having a guy on the field who's there as a coach as well. I think that could go a long way. So maybe they still will decide to, but I don't know. I I personally am on the team of of sign a vet somewhere. I mean, it's possible they could sign a vet. They just don't expect to see one, you know, before training camp. Uh, I, from from what I'm understanding, they're going to let these young guys play it out, see what they have. And then during training camp, 
you know, if, if they step up like they think it's going to happen, then, you know, they'll prove Ballard right, hopefully, and he'll be like, all right, we can, we can run with these guys. But if, if guys ain't stepping up, there's a good possibility you might hear a little bit of whispers about a T.Y. or a Julio or, you know, something of that nature popping up, um, you know, sometime in training camp. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to be intrigued to see how these young wide receivers, you know, work and, and also just, you know, <laughs> Paris Campbell, can he stay healthy? We know the talent's there, but he hasn't proven he can. So it's like, come on, man, just just please. We're all rooting for you. Please stay healthy because when you're on the field, it changes this offense. Oh, yes. All right, let's keep going here. And speaking of ex- inexperience, let's talk about two positions on this offensive line with inexperience. And when I say inexperience, I mean primarily at these positions, right? You have Matt Pryor, who played a lot of right tackle, played some right guard, but really hasn't played a whole lot of left tackle in his career so far, especially with Indianapolis. Uh, this will kind of be his first look at left tackle with the Colts. You got Bernard Ryman, who's a rookie, so he hasn't had any starting reps uh, in the NFL level. And then, you know, you talk about right guard, you have Danny Pinter, who filled in at center, not right guard, right? Those are two different positions. Now, I do think he's going to transition. It's going to be fine, but I think it still is, has to be a concern because you don't just have one position you have to potentially, you know, not worry about, but have questions on, but two positions on this offensive line. What are your thoughts on these two positions and these two potential players here, you know, transitioning to these positions? I'm not as worried about the right guard position because if one thing that, uh, Ballard has proven to us is he's really good at identifying and getting talent at the you know the the center part of your offensive line the centers and your guards are very good at doing that um, you know the best guy is going to win the job whoever's the best guy is going to end up being that there's a reason why Ballard let you know both Reed and Golowinski go you know because he liked what he saw uh with with the young group over there on that offensive line i'm i'm all for that i think that 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 position itself even though it's inexperienced i think they'll come out and be okay because whoever it is is going to have ryan kelly on one side of them and Braden smith on the other you know so that's going to help kind of clean up any kind of inexperienced mistakes early on until he gets acclimated well where i'm worried about is that left tackle position like you said matt Pryor. Um, filled in a couple times last season uh, during certain injury situations. Not a lot of starting experience there. And then Bernard Ryman, my goodness, he's played tackle in the college level for two years. He was a tight end for the other two years in college, you know? And so we're talking about inexperience. That's inexperience, you know? Uh, do I think that he's got the talent to possibly get out there and do that? Great. Yes, absolutely. Uh, from what I, I'm seeing, he's incredibly athletic and got some power to him. But, you know, inexperience is still inexperience. Um, at least there's two guys there that have the chance. I like the idea of letting Pryor and Ryman fight it out a whole lot more than what I like from last year when we had the uh, two guys fighting it out in the in the preseason that we had at left tackle last year. Um, last year, you might as well put a couple traffic cones out there at left tackle. Um, I think this year we're, we're much better off. Now, granted, we don't have uh, a pro bowl or sitting in the wings coming off an injury at some point this season. So we will be stuck with one of these guys. I just I just think the, the floor – is a lot higher than than uh, what it was last year uh, with, with those two situations. But it's still worrisome, very, very worrisome. I hope one of them are able to take the reins and run away with the starting position right away because otherwise it could spell some long days for Matt Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, specifically at left tackle, your quarterback's blind side. I mean, that's the scary part about it for me. If it was left guard or something like that, I'm a, I'm less worried about that. But left tackle, I think, honestly, and this is debatable, but I think it's the most important position um, on the offensive line because especially if you have a right-handed quarterback, you know, you, off that blind side, you got to protect your quarterback well. And and I just think that, you know, the Colts have struggled since Costanzo retired to find that guy. Granted, it's only been a couple off seasons now. We'll see if Bernard Ryman is that next guy or maybe Matt Pryor surprises us all. He turns out to be the franchise left tackle. 
But regardless, mm-hmm. they got to play well. You know, you got to figure it out. I think Ryman certainly has a higher floor uh, or the higher ceiling, but also I think that Matt Pryor has more experience, right? So I think he might get the first crack at it right away. We'll see. But it's it's definitely a little bit worrisome for sure because if there's any point that teams are probably going to attack on this offensive line, it's probably going to be the left tackle based off of that inexperience. So um, it's interesting. It's an interesting position to watch in training camp and stuff like that. I'm excited to see who wins that left tackle position. I'm, I'm secretly hoping it's Ryman, nothing against Matt Pryor, but I've always thought he's a fantastic left tackle and uh, more athletic, more, I think just more, much more of an athletic guy that the Colts are looking for. Kind of more of their mold of what a, their, they view a left tackle as for their future. So we'll see, though. We'll see. I would love for Matt Pryor to surprise me. And who knows, Lawrence, if Bernard Ryman you know, takes control of that left tackle position, could Matt Pryor challenge for right guard with Danny Pinter? He played there last year. He filled in a little bit. That will be an interesting battle, too. Uh, maybe he's maybe he's competing for two positions. We'll see. But All right. Uh, another thing here that I want to talk about is just the health overall of this team, right? I mean, we talked about it last year. The Colts had their fair share of injuries, whether it was T.Y. Hilton last year, you know, whether it was Eric Fisher, you know, to start the season. He missed a couple games. Whether it was Julian Blackman going down. Uh, the Colts had their fair share of injuries, and I think down the stretch, it really hurt them. It really hurt them, specifically at the safety position, uh, because they just didn't have a whole lot of depth there. Now, granted, the Colts do have a lot more depth, I think, in key positions than they did last offseason. But you bring in a guy like Stephon Gilmore, who really struggled with injuries last year. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned that can this team hold up and be able to make it through you know, to the postseason? And then when they get to the postseason... Okay, this team's talented on paper, but who are they going to have actually out there for a playoff game? That's my question because they've struggled with some injuries the last couple of years. Well, the benefit is for the second year in a row, the Colts will have their bye week in week 14. So that that helps a little bit. That that bye week actually helped Paris Campbell come back for that last, you know, the last week of the, the, the season. There was a ton of names mm-hmm. you didn't list, right? Uh, last last pre last preseason, we all oh, yeah. the entire offensive line was injured except for Mark Lewinsky, right? <laughs> the whole offensive line, yes. uh, between uh, Ryan Kelly's extended elbow and, and 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 Nelson's foot injury that somehow he contracted from Carson Wentz, uh, <laughs> and then then another <laughs> foot injury, you know, the Braden Smith and. Pint, yep. Even Pinter had a oh, foot injury, God. you know, right. during preseason. Like the whole offensive line was like, yeah, is this the Colts' offensive line or the Indianapolis uh, Hospital ER? I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> and then, and then we had Tyquan yeah. Lewis go down, right, during a big play right. too. Yep. You know, it was like it, one of the highest yeah. highs to the lowest lows in a matter of seconds. You know, just watching that game and yep. going, oh man, and. Yeah, it, it's like you just forget how there's so many injuries. You forget all the guys that went down last year that you're like, wow, that guy was a key contributor before he went down. Yeah. Oh, another key contributor. And somehow this team had themselves in playoff position. You know, obviously they crapped the bed the last two weeks of the season, but they had themselves playing well and beating good teams despite all their injuries. But that is a concern because so many guys down last year. It was just at the one point, I think. You know, people were going out to Grand Park, like blessing the field because they're just like, please stop the injuries. It was nuts. And then got in, you know, Quiddy Pay getting hurt a little bit, getting a little banged up. You're just like, this is insane, man. Like, that, I've never seen anything like well, it's that. It's like the Ravens game. I mean, come on. We were down to two players from <laughs> our secondary. That's it, too. The rest yeah. of them was serving ice cream at freaking Dairy Queen the week before, you know? I mean, good <laughs> Lord. Uh, that We got to do something about it. We got to identify the problem and fix it. Now, um, the Colts are currently running even OTAs at full speed now. So possibly that might help out getting them better, you know, more in the in the shape, more in the football shape, so that you know less likely of getting one of those soft tissue injuries that we have seen happen more often. Because oh, you got to remember, in 2020 there was no no uh, you know off season. No one practiced early on. We had a ton of injuries last year. We had some injuries. We still still under a lot of uh, protocol, but we still had the injuries but they weren't coming in practicing full speed right away, right? They are doing that now. So uh, using OTAs, doing full speed practices, 
uh, getting their li uh, ligaments and stuff up, up working, I think hopefully helps out. Knock on wood because, you know, I don't want to see this. As much as I, I do think that Chris Ballard did identify that as a problem last year uh, with depth because injury problems, he went out and got a lot of depth this offseason at different positions, uh, especially in the secondary part, you know, in the safeties and, 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 and cornerback. But I don't want to test that out. Let's keep our best guys out there on the field. How about that, right? Right. That'd be nice. Is that too much to ask, football gods? I don't think it is. Uh, please just help us out. We would greatly appreciate it. Just one healthy season to see how good we actually are. Uh, I would love to see that, but who knows? All right, uh, a couple more here. Uh, talking about back to the inexperience real fast. I just think Lawrence, the inexperience is just doing it, right? Because we talked about off air, like, the Peyton Manning days. These these players that were on the Colts, they knew what it took to go and win, right? They knew what it took to go win those gritty games. Go, you know, when you're, you know, not crap in the bed last week of the season, games on the line. Like if you don't make it, you don't get to the playoffs. The Colts didn't do that last year, but you know, those teams. What you know, that's I think that's what separated uh, a lot of the teams, the average team from the great teams. And and the Colts last year, they were an average team, and they proved it. They proved it when it mattered. And so my question is, okay, the Colts have not won since Frank Reich has been head coach. This is insane. The Colts have not won a week one game since Frank Reich has been head coach. They're 15 and 10 in the division, which isn't great. They have never won in Jacksonville. And they've never won the division. So something's got to give here, man. How many times do you have to, do you have to blame the injuries and blame the players before – it starts to fall on you as the head coach and as a coaching staff. That's my question. And I, I've had my beef with Frank Reich over the years, but I think it's now it's time to do it. You don't have any more excuses. You have your quarterback locked in for the next couple of years. You have to do it. You have to, you have to do something different this off season, this season that you haven't ever done under Frank Reich. And you have to do those things. I mean, I think if you can win the division, that will answer a lot of questions that people have around Frank Reich including myself, some, some some issues I have with him. Can you start actually doing those things, improving to yourself, improving to your team, that we are capable of taking it to the next level? That's my question, Lawrence, is just the inexperience, because this team hasn't done it yet. And I'm kind of to the point with this team where I'm like, all right, I don't believe you can do it until you do it. You got to prove that you can do it. I'll root for you to do it. But you got to earn my trust. I think a lot of Colts fans are there too, especially after the two game collapse at the end of the season. We're just like, prove it. Fine. If you, if we talk about how all, it seems like every offseason, the last couple of years, people have said, oh, the Colts are favorites to win the division. They're favorites to win the division. They haven't won the division yet. So to me, it's like, you got to do it. You got to prove everybody wrong and actually do it. Right. Absolutely. Talk is Put cheap up or shut you don't up. Back it up. Right. Um, and, in yep. my opinion, to, to back up the whole, this is the season you need to do it, the schedule is prime for that situation. I mean, you said we, we haven't won week one in the entire time. Houston is our week one game, yep. ladies and gentlemen. All right. If we can't win that, we have no business being <laughs> yep. in the playoffs. All right. And then Jacksonville, at Jacksonville, week two, you know, that's that's a prime situation. We get the week one jitters out of the way. And you don't have the the grind of the entire season behind you going into that game. So you get the, the week one jitters and, and inexperience and all that out of the way week one against arguably the weakest team in the division. And then you go and you fight Jacksonville in Jacksonville with a chance back-to-back -back weeks to take two monkeys off of your back. Go do it. Go do it. Yes. Go do it. Go do it. Last off season or last season, you with the Patriots, you finally got that monkey off your back. Now you got to start doing those again. You know, you can't. We can't just stay here. It's torture, man. It's horrible. I hate it. I hate not being able to say we've ever beat Jacksonville since Frank Rack has been head coach. I hate always seeing the Titans somehow bullcrap their way to winning the division. It's like we know we have talent. We know we have the coaches. Why don't we just actually do it? Just it's time. It's time to do it. You know, this is like you said. You know, if if you're not going to do it this year, you're not going to do it. Like, I, that's just my opinion. And it's like, if you're not going to win the division and you're not going to actually like do the things that good teams do, 
Maybe you got to start to talk about the, the leadership of this team moving forward. And I know for some fans, they're like, no way, no way. We love it. But like, at some point, results speak for themselves. And the lack of results have spoken for themselves so far. If the Colts don't do something big this year, you know, win the division big kind of this year, I mean, I think that it's fair to criticize that and start to wonder about the future of this team. That's just my opinion. Um, I've had my issues, like I said, with Frank Reich, but it's just yeah, time, I man, mean, to do it. The it's only time. way not winning the division uh, does not put him on the hot seat is if he does make the playoffs and goes fairly deep into the playoffs uh, just to, to back up, hey, you know, we're actually a pretty good team. Um, our schedule is not necessarily – easy all the way around we play some very very tough teams and the the only thing is is man i look at the colts and say well it looks like the colts got better as a roster and you look at the titans and you go it doesn't look like the titans got better as a roster from last year to this year we should be able to at least split with them and if we can at least split with them then we should be able to win the division. So let's let's go out and let's do that, guys. Like, yeah, I mean that that second Titans game. What was the score? I, I didn't really like watch that game. I wasn't able to, but I know the Colts were up big. Like they were killing the Titans. So it's not like the Colt. It was neck and neck all oh, yeah. the way. They let them come back in that game. So it's like the Colts showed that they are a better team than the Titans when they want to be, but they didn't want to be, and then they just let it go, and all that crap happened. And you know, it's just like. It's just like they tease you. You see these like moments of brilliance, and you're just like, okay, all right, we're finally turning the corner. We beat the Patriots. Okay. And then all I of a mean, sudden, when like, you yeah. lose, and when you lose six games in one okay. season where you were leading by double digits at halftime, that that says something. And that's why there was change that happened, right? There's that's why change happened. Now we got to see if that change yeah. actually uh performs on the field this year. I hope so, because they did a lot this offseason on that defense specifically. You mentioned the coaching change. Yes. Also, just a lot more personnel, a lot more talented players you know, at key positions that they really struggled at last year, You know, namely pass rush and things of that nature, and also getting you know a corner that was one of the best corners of football a couple seasons ago. So, all right, last point here, Lawrence, a good point that you brought up. You know, talking about all these things with an experience, I think, you know, just with all the guys the Colts brought in on defense and on offense, the cohesion has to be questioned, right? Because a lot of these guys, this is kind of their first time working together ever, whether it's rookies or whether it's guys that have been in the league for a while, even even you know players to coaches as well. Uh, a, a lack of cohesion potentially could that be a weakness for this team? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Matt Ryan walks in here. I mean, obviously he's been played in the NFL for fourteen years and he's got accolades, and we're not going to question the guy or the player. But come on, he's never thrown to any of these wide receivers before. He's never stepped back and understands how the blocking scheme and how these guys block in front of him, the offensive line. I mean, before this year, it's not like him and Frank Reich used to sit down and, and draw up plays together. You know, this is a situation where, you know, all fr from the, the seventh round pick all the way up to Matt Ryan, all these new guys have got to trust and learn each other and that is a problem that is something that is, is going to have to happen early on this this offseason there isn't time to get to you know Gilmore out there he he can't wait until week five to be like all right so I can trust both these safeties and 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 the, and the other corners do their job so I can worry about the guy in front of me you know we can't do that this all the trust and, and cohesion from player to player and coach to coach or player to coach has to happen this offseason. And that's not a lot of time in the NFL. Not when you have this many new guys, right? right. This many new people. You got two new two new starters on the offensive line, right? Quentin Nelson's going to have to, you know, and you're going to probably see splitting reps. You know, with Quentin Nelson is going to have to split, see the guy next to him split two different guys splitting reps uh, for that position. He's got to figure that out as well. And the guy's going to have to figure out how Quentin Nelson works. And same with, you know, the 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 right guard, you know, um, with Kelly and Smith are going to have to figure them out. Um, because you got, you think, well, you don't need to know that very well. 
I'm sorry, but the NFL uses a lot of stunts these days. Mm -hmm. And until you, you know, you have to be able to get a feel and understand the guy next to you when you're an offensive lineman. So, you know, when these delayed blitzes and these stunts and things of that nature happen, and you just got to know that wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, and the quarterback, that is so huge, so huge. Not only does he have to under, he's got to figure out how these different players run their routes. He's got to get their speed down, right? Every player has a different speed. Every player has a different catch radius. He's not going to throw the same ball to um, Naheem Hines as he's going to throw to Jelani Woods, right? Right. Because if you do, if, if, if you throw Naheem Hines a ball, the way you would throw it to Jelani Woods, it's going to be way out of his reach. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. you know? Um, so there's, there's that whole situation. You got to get down and, and, you know, obviously Matt Ryan's got to get comfortable with the playbook. Him and Frank's got to go through all these plays, play these, uh, practice these out and, and, and figure out which one he's comfortable playing, which one he's best at, which one he doesn't like say, Hey, you know what? I don't like this play. Let's get rid of it. Let's let's try to put something else in here. You know, that's a whole bunch of new people that have to get to know each other in a very short period of time, and and that is a weakness on on any team when they when they bring in a bunch of new people. I do also wonder about some of those replaying. You know, talking about the defense with a new coordinator with all these new assistants and stuff. Mm-hmm. They got to figure out these players and these players that have been in this system in this Matt Eberflu system. They got to figure out this system. So these things take time, right? These things, these guys have to get comfortable, you know, obviously with the players in front of them, the players beside them, if there's some new additions, but just the scheme in general and what Gus Bradley's scheme asked them to do as well. Because there are differences, right? There are differences from what Matt Eberflus ran to what Gus Bradley ran. While there are a lot of similarities, there are differences as well. So I'm going to be intrigued to see how that works, you know, with, let's say, Darius Leonard, for example, you know, does that change his responsibility or his role at all in this defense or, you know, some of the secondary players as well who have been here, you know, their whole careers under Matt Eberflus and this this coaching staff that now is all in Chicago, right? So it's going to be interesting to see for sure. But uh, yeah, guys, let us know what you think about all the weaknesses potentially for the Indianapolis Colts in 2022. Like I said at the beginning, you'll notice a trend, that trend. It's just a lack of experience, honestly, in a lot of different areas, whether it be, you know, different new guys that are entering into this or or if it's just, you know, new systems and, and, and different things like that or just p- new players playing different positions, all those things, anything and everything in between. Let us know, guys, your thoughts on this. Thank you, Lawrence, for tuning in. Uh, or Thank you, Lawrence, for coming on. Appreciate I'll it. I'll watch man. it too later. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Oh man, I got my words tangled there, but I uh, appreciate you coming on, man. Guys, go subscribe to Lawrence's channel. Uh Lawrence, how where are you at right now, subscribers? I haven't looked in a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm think I'm pushing 2420, somewhere around in there. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, go subscribe to Lawrence. He always cranks out the great content. I'd love to get you, man, to 3K this offseason. That would be awesome. If you guys are tuning in, I'll put Lawrence's uh, link to Lawrence's channel in the description. Be sure to go subscribe to him. But always a pleasure having you on, my friend. Wow, well, it's always a pleasure whenever I'm able to show up, man. Uh, always love talking football with you. Absolutely. And thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate all your support. As always, guys, go Colts. Of course.